confrontational. So, well, if you get abusive, I'll, I'll block you straight. But I'm just saying, let's be grown-ups, all right? Right. In the 15th century, Christianity came to sub-Saharan Africa with the arrival of the Portuguese, okay? You can do your own research and um, check up on what I'm saying here. But I've tried to compress things. I don't want this to be long wounded. So I just go with the fire, fire points. Uh -huh. So from the 15th to the 19th century, Christian, Christian missionaries grew in Africa, ultimately driven by the interests of the Europeans to colonize Africa. That's a fact. Christianity was then weaponized as an agent of destabilization um, against Africans. And when I say destabilization, um, it was forced, it was beaten into people, my ancestors, your ancestors. They killed, maimed, absolutely dehumanized them. It's beyond words. Okay, all of these are well documented, all right? And I would expect any sensible person to know that, except you want to be in denial and there is no point. So, um, with, in its rigid European form, it denied countless Africans um, their pride in their culture, they attacked their culture, their spirituality, particularly, and any ceremonies that were unique to them. The missionaries invaded in huge numbers and they pretty much came. They didn't come with pleasantries. They, they went, yeah, yeah, I, the Arabs too, of course. You're right, Yoande. They invaded and they they didn't come to be cordial or like, hey, man, can we come in? You know, we're just traveling and we happen to bump on your shores. Nope. They absolutely came, conquered, destroyed. And the PTSDs and um, the destruction still exist till date. The impact of slavery, they're fresh, they exist till date. Now, I am not, like I said, I'm trying to just keep it simple. So, in knowing this, as a young man, I was born into Christianity. I grew up in it. In fact, through my teenage years, I say I grew up in church. I I was a chorister. I grew up in church. I know A to Z of Christianity, I can say that. But as the years went by, there's always been something about me when I was a lot younger. There's just always, you know, when I was a lot, lot younger, I was under the, um, the, I was within the jurisdiction and, you know, daily existence was within the jurisdiction of my parents at the, the time. And, um, but there was just something in me as a very young teenager that this is off. I never really liked church, but I grew up in church. I um, had a good time singing in the choir, made friends and all that. But the whole concept of Bible, the stories and the premise of it, especially the history of Christianity, as always, the moment I was able to gain access to some materials, even though when I was a lot younger, I when I was a lot younger, I've always felt that something was off. Give me a second.
There's something I want to read. It's one of the snippets that I opened up. Within the space of 400 years, millions of people were forcibly taken from Africa as slaves. The majority of them went to America, although many were taken to the Middle East, North Africa. Millions, multi-millions. Slavery has been practiced all over the world for thousands of years, but never before had so many people from one continent been transported to another against their will. It is hard to be precise, but around 15 million Africans in total were forcibly taken from the continent into slavery. Large-scale slave trading in Africa ceased towards the end of the 19th century, but its legacy of suffering continues today. So that's why I said from the 15th to the 19th century, <clears throat> the Christian missionaries, they grew aggressively. They grew aggressively in Africa and um, they violated, they destroyed everything that belonged to us. And one of the main effects of slavery is the psychological slavery. One of the, not effects, facets of it is psychological slavery where multi-millions of Africans have had their minds totally destroyed. It was intentional. They had a template. They had a blueprint that they were working with. There was a major coordinated attack on the identity of Africans, stripping you of your culture, your pride, your integrity, your spirituality and your ceremonies, everything that was unique to us, right? Before they arrived on the shores of Africa, they absolutely destroyed it. Let me say something before I proceed those religious white folks, I mean black folks, that are adamant gatekeepers of their oppressors, okay? The colonizers, they are thoroughly aware of African spirituality. They are terrified of it. Did you hear what I said? They thoroughly understand the potency we are the prime beings. They know. If, if, if you as a black man come up with an invention or whatever, something brand new, and it's just mind blowing, they, they, they will pay attention. They want to know the nitty gritty of what you're working with. They know. But a bunch of our folks sadly have been mentally damaged they've been severely damaged that they've done it in such a way they forced religiosity into us they bit it into our ancestors so that everything about you will become secondary you despise you hate you have a blatant disregard for do you understand and this has carried on for generations now one of the things that breaks my breaks my my heart is there are countless number of black folks africans they have no clue about history but they are ready to gain argument with you here and now they are ready to pull out the sword. They are ready to fight you to death. They are ready to defend the indefensible. But if you take them 
on the pathway of history, they wouldn't come with you. If you take them on a journey, if you try to educate them that this is history, this is a true account of how such and such became what you are holding on to today. They don't want to listen. Part of that behavioral pattern is it indicates how severely damaged people are in that regard. We are particularly the only race of people who we have been damaged se severely in terms of our in terms of the trueness of our identity. That's right. Like I was saying, the white man knows about the potency of African spirituality. They understand black excellence, the supremeness. They know, but the damage is almost irreparable. It's unbelievable, man. Now, those of you that have been watching me for a minute, you know that I proudly beat my chest and say I'm a proud practitioner of Ifa. And I was <clears throat> initiated, fully initiated into Ifa. We call it Itefa last year. And, um, it was an amazing experience. I did the induction first, Ishefa, and after that, the full initiation ran for like almost two weeks, and it was completed on the 22nd of July last year. It was an amazing experience, and one of the major things that that did was, it was a rebirth for me, and opened my eyes and absolutely, absolutely uncovered exactly who Franklin is and what I was called to do in this dispensation, okay? Now, I'm trying to take this. Thank you, Baba T. What's that? The damage that Mount Zion movies in the 90s did to how traditional faith is unmeasurable, bro. Ayamatanga, <laughs> you all right? Give me a second. Ifa is a Yoruba religion or spirituality, whatever you want to call it, and a system of divination, absolutely powerful. It's literal. Literary uh, corpus is the Odu Ifa, uh, about 256 Odus of Ifa, combinations of it. Um, Oromila is identified as the Grand Priest, as he is who revealed divinity and prophecy to the world. Now, that's from a Yoruba point of view, because it belongs to Yorubas, right? In West Africa. And Babala Wolves. Babalaos are known as the custodians of the secrets of the universe. Okay. Or Yanifas use either the divining chain known as Okbele or the sacred palm or color knots called Ikin, Ikinfa, on the wooden divination tray called Okmoifa. Ifa is practiced across Americas, West Africa, and the Canary Islands in the form of the complex of a complex religious system, you know, spirituality as I call it, and plays a critical role in the traditions of, you know, all this Santeria, Palo, the, the, you know, people during the course of slavery, African spirituality followed a lot of our ancestors and it was able to evolve into numerous versions of it that we know today, you understand? So I wanted to read that before I carry on here. Ifa predates Christianity and Islam in West Africa and continues to be an important part of Yoruba culture. 
in Nigeria, in um, West Africa, and across Americas. It predates, did you hear what I said? Yes, Ifa is big in Brazil, because there are many bloodlines of Yorubas also in Brazil. It predates. What does that mean? It's who we were. It's who we are. So, for example, I'm a Yoruba man. My bloodline emanated from West Africa. Generations of me. I'm a son of Awodia, right? Ifa was practiced by my ancestors, my bloodline, my family. Ifa goes deep. I've only just found out not too long ago. Generations. Now, if Ifa predates Christianity and Islam, remember, they brought these to the shores of Africa. We had African spirituality. That's who we are. That's what my ancestors were practicing. So the very simple question is, somebody, the people who came, who killed, stole, destroyed, violated, they're still doing so generations after. They beat a particular concept into my ancestors. And that basically becomes a blueprint that I live by. No. So that's where my emancipation journey started from. And over the years, even whilst I was still in church, I've had this in my subconscious. My Uri has always told me I never really liked it. Then I you listen to the fraudulent doctrines and the misrepresentation frauds. And you really got nothing from it. I've always fought with that for years. This, 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 this has nothing to do with my identity. And that's fact. Even if you go into the archives of white folks, if you go into their archives, it's well documented. They have thorough awareness about African spirituality. They don't like it because of its potency. They've known this since time immemorial. They know. So, when somebody says they are worshipping the God of Israel, the God of this, I am not an Israelite. The book of um, Thessalonians open to Philippians. I'm not a Philippian. I am not a Thessalonian. I'm not Hebrew. Those made up stories have nothing to do with me. Absolutely nothing. Absolutely nothing. You see, all you've got to do is put your emotions on the shelf for a moment. Let's just give honest and genuine consideration to facts. Like I said, one of the fundamental problems with most black folks is black, most black people don't understand history. They don't want to know. They want to latch onto that sky god and all of those things that we, we, we've been so damaged and absolutely conditioned that when you have your own children you mandatorily put you force you force the you force the the same drugs down their lungs you understand the damage is almost irreparable that's why amongst ourselves there's a huge division the other day I was having a chat with my wife Victoria 
Some of you already know this behavior. There is this, there is this thing about black folks. I don't know you, you don't know me. It might be a gathering and you come in through the door. It might be a lady, a woman, nicely dressed, looking gorgeous, but you don't know that lady. You've never met her before. And there is this resentment. There is this feeling of disgust amongst ourselves. It's part of the damage. That's why we struggle to carry out togetherness. We like to individualize ourselves. My success. No, I'm going to walk this journey alone. No, a, a simple 5,000 pounds worth of investment. Most black people, some of you are watching, we can't even put our heads together to do it together. Now, there is ego in the way. There is all sorts of sentiments. There is tribalism. There is all sorts of disgusting mindset. This is part of years of damage. We cannot, we are so damaged that we cannot build together. You understand? Do you understand me? Yes. We've been robbed of critical thinking. Thank you, Sigmos. Um, this one says, um, history is not finished. Christianity, Islam don't work, we know that. But this Ifa religion also don't work. No, you're a liar. And I'm going to block you right now. You see, if you're a practitioner of Ifa, you wouldn't say it doesn't work. You clearly know nothing about it. You're a troll. You understand me? So bye, D, bye. You're blocked. Goodbye. Peace off. No time. I already said it respectfully at the start of the show. Okay? It's not... Um, you see, part of, part of this is... Black people will um, um, no initiation is a choice. No, why do you need to initiate yourself to know your creator? <laughs> Let me carry on, okay? Let me carry on. As I said, Ifa predates Christianity and Islam in West Africa and continues to be an important part of Yoruba culture in Nigeria, Africa, uh, West Africa and Americas, right? Yoruba spirituality is centuries older than Christianity and Islam, like I said. It crossed the Atlantic with slave ships, evolved into Makumba, Santeria, voodoo, and all that stuff that other people practice. Now, um, Yoruba, via Ifa worship, via Ifa, we, we worship um, Elidumari, who rules the universe. Okay? Now, Uh, for Ifa consultation, how do I contact you? Just send me an email. Look in the description of this video if you want to carry Ifa divination. Just send me an email. Foodchannel1960 at gmail.com. There are plenty of divinations. So much administrative stuff. I'm just sending them back to people in batches. So much. But, as I was saying, so, I, let me say before I carry on, if you want to be disruptive, I'm speaking about my journey, okay? I think it's it's a display of madness to try to hijack my story or the show or become disruptive 
bear in mind, there's a block button. I will block you. Okay? Exercise your free will. Go somewhere else. But if you want to be disruptive or you want to say something nasty, I will just block you and you're totally banned from the channels. But just remember that in the grand scheme of things, you are irrelevant. So there's no point. I am not your problem. I don't probably don't even know you. Most people are faceless, except for the few that I know. So if you want to turn here to like mud slinging, I'll just block you. Do you understand? Again, it's a very common behavioral pattern amongst black folks. We are very disruptive. We, we amongst ourselves, unnecessary dissemination of energies, just display of toxic energy. The religiosity, people will fight crabs in a barrel, thank you. They will antagonize themselves. We will never channel. We will never channel our collective energy for positivity. Just, you know, think about it. Your oppressors, they created a pyramid, a global pyramid, whereby they designed it in such a way to force the black race at the bottom of it. Fact, the ratio pyramid, and then the so-called elites, they keep themselves at the top. Black folks have to amalgamate with other races, take an oath of silence before they can enjoy what they regard as social climb or career climb. You know, it's intentional. We are the prime beings. We are absolutely powerful. Life started in Africa. You know, I'm, I'm trying just to make everything as compact as possible tonight so I don't get go too deep. So anyways, um, I found Ifa. I left Christianity years ago. But uh, after leaving church, because I just had enough, but after leaving church for some years, pfft, I just wasn't going to church. I was at home, just chilling, and um, I didn't really have a direction. The whole thing was dead to me because I can see through it. It's when it comes to identity, it's not for me. And the moment you get emancipated, you the moment you get activated, the switch would never go off. It's not for me. They brought it to the shores of Africa. They bit this into my ancestors. Plenty of them died for that reason. We were violated. They themselves have a documentations in their archives that African spirituality, Ifa being one of it, predates their so-called religion. It tells you all you need to know. If my bloodline are practitioners of this, why should I turn my back? Justina Rogers. Good evening from my end, Franklin. Thank you for joining my, yeah, my channel membership. Did you know you can join my channel membership for the price of a cup of coffee? Just click on the join button. So that's where the journey started from. And um, yeah, eventually I, the universe, my Ori pointed me in the direction of found Ifa. When I started my journey, I came across charlatans across, across the line and I'll talk about that briefly. Sadly, even within African spirituality, they are gatekeepers, they are charlatans. And sadly, it's been the experience of a lot of people. It's left a bad taste in their mouth. So they've had these preconceived notion that, oh, African spirituality is probably a sham. No, it's not. This is what I've said previously. If I let it me, if I sort of die, if I turn it into a if I is pure, purity, potent 
very powerful. There's no bias. But where you will come across dubiousness is through the human medium. So if you come across a Babala or an Ifa priest who is dubious, who then uses their knowledge unscrupulously to siphon funds or to work in amalgamation with other forces so that they can keep you suppressed. That's when you will have negative experience and that's when people would think, oh, maybe this, you know, it, it happens all the time. In fact, it happens in all walks of life. Do you understand? Some people would tell you marriage is amazing because it's an amazing experience for them. People who went through domestic violence and really terrible relationship or sometimes relationships with very bad partners will more than likely tell you that mm, marriage is blown out of proportion for X, Y, Z reasons because that's based on the experiences which we cannot disregard. Do you understand? So, now, one of the benefits of um, Ifa when it comes to, let me talk about Ifa. So, I found Ifa and um, like a lot of people have come to me, you know, Ifa doesn't discriminate. And one of the things that Ifa addresses is your Uri. Your Uri being your head, it talks about your your, your 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 universal calling, you know, what you're called to do in this dispensation. A lot of the things that you do is attached to your Uri, you understand. So apart from we have deities, we have energies that I'll go into details at a later date, you know, um, that are connected to the practice of Ifa, but predominantly, the key focus is your Uri, your being, yourself. That's why my divinations will be unique to me. The ones that are going my wife's direction will be unique to her. If I may identify the connection as partners and certain things may come out for both of us, but there are certain things that will come out for her that totally have nothing to do with me. And what's amazing is the power behind the practice of Ifa is. Now, let me talk about what we call Akose Jai, one of the beautiful, amazing parts of Ifa. Now, Akose Jai, in English, is called predestination. So, when a baby is born, within three months of a child arriving into this earth, um, they would take the baby, and um, it's called Yiye um, Kadarawo, and your mom, me. So you want to, you have uh, this baby. If you look at the journey of most adults, some of you are probably watching, most people just wade through life with no directions. Some of you don't even know the energy you carry. You don't know who you are, what you were genuinely called to do in this um, dispensation. And more than likely, people make bad choices. There are spiritual choices that will have adverse effect on their journeys in life. You go in a totally different direction and you waste your time on this planet. You marry the wrong person. You date the wrong person. You sleep with the wrong energy. All of these things. We are energies ourselves. We are energies. <laughs> For me, if I so... It's so, it's so, uh, let me see. The wrong choice is ritual divination of using innate moral understanding. If I is so powerful that whatever it is that, if I have a pressing question about any part of my life, I can go before if I, and I can uncover if there is any negative energy that's affecting me, there's anything, if I will absolutely uncover and deal with it, there will be recommendations for appeasement, a body sacrifices, and if you, if you adhere, 
you would definitely get a fantastic outcome. Humans, we come with complexities. People are not patient enough. People like to circumvent process. Some people have a misconception that we're talking about spirituality and all of this. They think it's some kind of a magic wand. You know, yeah, 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 okay, 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 okay. Just get this done. They want to wake up tomorrow morning, ta-da, everything is rosy. Even though they've spent the last 10 years acquiring negative energy, making ugly ugly decisions. Now, I was talking about Akosa Jai. There are four benefits of that Akosa Jai, that Ifa, you know, it's well done within the practice of Ifa. Ifa. One is um, seeing the big picture. It provides the parents of the child an insight into the predestination of a child. What's the child called to do in the dispensation? What energy, what's their ori designed for? What type of human being is this? Are they an Ifar priest? Are they going to grow up to be somebody that works in this particular profession, that profession? What exactly is this bouncing baby boy or bouncing baby girl called to do in this universe? When a baby is born, it's usually done within the first three months. And it's amazing because the moment you're aware, it changes, it, it creates a roadmap for the parents. You know exactly how to guide that child, particularly spiritually. You understand? You know the type of um, child this is, what they are called to do, they are pros and cons spiritually. Some people, you they may have to refrain from eating certain types of food. They may have to refrain from certain types of color combinations in terms of clothing. They may have to venerate certain energies. It could be Oshun, it could be Ogun, it could be a shulalu as often as possible, right? So it gives you, gives you, um, allows you to see the big picture, right? Then the second point is it provides a guide around a child's purpose sort of similar to the first bullet point. It gives you a guide around the child's purpose in life. So again, from the parental point of view, you're able to guide the child accordingly. You know what the child is called to do. If a child, a child's energy, because when people die, our energies get recycled, if you don't know. You die physically, but these energy within this body gets recycled. The energy never gets diminished. So when that energy revisits this, you know, dispensation in the form of another human being, what are you called to do? Do you understand? Now, number three, it's a good measure for the parents. Like I said, it's also similar. A good measure because it makes parenting that child very easy. If you have three children and you carry out pre... Who is this? Do you have proof? Bro, don't let me block you, man. I'm going to say it to you once. Don't let me block you. I don't have that patience. You understand me? I've got zero tolerance for your dissemination of foolishness. I'm not trying to get you to become an Ifa convert. No, I'm speaking my truth. Don't ask me for proof. I'm sick and tired of you Negroes coming here with your thick ass lips and fingers typing nonsense. Don't do that, man. You understand? Okay, do you go to your churches and... Um, and, and stuff to ask them, to your, your vicars, to ask them to provide you the proof of the gods that you believe in, that they're beating to your ancestors. All right? 
there was there was a, there was a guy. I digress before I continue. There was a man that I met on the high street the other day. Oh, Mr. Franklin, I recognize you from your YouTube. And then he was talking about this Ifa, and I, oh, hello, hi, hello, sir. I gave him respect. And he was like, oh, you know this Ifa thing that you've been talking about? Do you have proof? You know, these, these Ifa thing that you're talking about, do you, can you, can you show me the proof that this Ifa works? And then, I could barely see his neck, but that's, that's a separate conversation. And, and, and then I said, what's your name, sir? I kid you not. I kid you not. He probably would watch this. He said, his name is Peter Ifagbimi. So I said, what? Ifagbimi. And he said, yeah. I, I thought it was a wind-up. I said, wait, you are Ifagbimi? He said, y y yeah. Oh, <laughs> a bit of a coincidence there. I said, yeah, yeah, but that, 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 that's, that's nothing. Bro, I said, your name is Ifagbimi. So he put his hand in his jacket and he brought out um, his work ID. And his name says Ifagbimi. Imagine... This guy comes from a powerful bloodline. A very powerful bloodline where the bedrock of that bloodline is the practice of Ifa. It's, it's in the name. He's in his 50s. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The name, um, you know, for my family, you know, but I've never, he was trying sound like an Englishman. It was like, can you provide me with proof? For... So I was just like, you know what, sir? It's been a pleasure, man. Have a nice day. So I walked off. Do you understand? This is what I said at the start. These are people with totally destroyed identity. Now, don't, don't mix this up with, when I'm talking about identity, they could be educated, conventional education with degrees, master's degree, um, you know, first degrees and all that stuff. They may even have PhDs. Those are classroom stuff. I have a degree. You can have multiple degrees and be spiritually blind. You can have multiple degrees and have be totally lost in terms of who you truly are. When we come to the West, part of that is, your name is Olushola. Well, because you're trying, you're pandering, you're desperately tap dancing. Oh, my name's Shola. Sorry, wait, what? Who is Shola? Yeah, yeah, Shola. This man is Ifagbimi, Mr. Ifagbimi. I, I, I would speak to some people that send me emails and you see their name. Ogundiran, Ogundari, Ogundikbe, Ogushaki. These are powerful Africans. But they are lost. They are oblivious. A woman, I sent her the outcome of our divination a few days ago. And the Ifa priest said, every of the problems she's having in her life, career-wise, financially, all that here in the UK, Ifa said she needs to resuscitate the dead energies. She needs to venerate the energy of Ogun with immediate effect within seven days. And periodically, she needs to venerate Ogun, appease the energy of Ogun, a daft, blind 
African will laugh at that. Do you understand me? Do you understand what I'm saying? There's another, there's, there's another, uh, another lady. She said she has this multi, I don't want to go into details, you know, because people's divination outcomes are very private and unique to them. But the, the lady had these complexities in her life and all that. And if I say she needs to, she's somebody that needs to venerate the energy of issue or sign as often as possible. It's who we are. You are not Hebrew. You are not a Thessalonian. <laughs> you are not. We are true sons and daughters of Africa of the soil. Sometimes, some people just need to recalibrate their lives. You activate the dead energies that should have been activated from when you were born. The moment your spirituality just goes bang. Don't worry, Allah, me. Let them be, dis be disrespectful. My block, Yawani. Block them straight. You understand? Straight. You bring foolishness, you get sledgehammer. No, no time. Black people are adamant. They are like that. Like I always say, if this was a channel of a white man talking about Ifa, you'd be like, oh my God, do you see this white guy talking about Ifa? Wow. They would never say one disrespectful thing. But when they see their own kind, they must behave like douchebags. Let a white man sit on this channel and say, oh, so I embraced Ifa and this and this and this and talk for the next two hours. Black folks with their inferiority complex would never say anything disrespectful. Facts. But when you see your own kind, you run your mouth like a bathroom tap. Point number four of the benefits of Akosejai pre-destination checks. Point number four is to help fine tune what does that mean? So when the, which Akosajaya is basically a thorough, robust divination carried out for a newly born baby. Now, some, depending on the ori of the child, if I may say, oh, this child needs this appeasement, this child needs these rituals. It could be to protect them. They must venerate these energy. Can you imagine multi-millions of us in terms of relationship, in terms of even your journey through this life? A lot of people have gone in totally different direction, totally different university degrees, you're operating in an industry that has nothing to do with you. Some of you right now, you are sitting behind a desk in offices and answering to people that should normally be answering to you. Some people, the way you are designed by the universe, you're not designed, you would never thrive functioning under the energies of other people. It's not about pride or arrogance. Th uh, through your journey in life, you may have to pick up experiences and things like that, but really, you are designed 
to be at the pinnacle of affairs. You're designed to actually create jobs, actually be a blessing to other people. But if you lack fulfillment and you've gone in a totally wrong direction, how can you then be able to function as blessings to other people? Do you understand what I'm saying? And that's why some people will just remain dormant. It doesn't matter if you live in the US, you live in the UK. In the last um, couple of weeks, since I started taking divination um, orders from people, it's been mind blowing because it's just pouring in, pouring in, pouring in. And it allows me to read you know, getting a snippet into what people are dealing with. It's amazing. It's mind-blowing. The amount of diasporans with mind-blowing baggages. It's unbelievable. There is a guy, an interesting one that I read this afternoon. He... Uh, if I is not astrology, I beg you. Astrology, Nibo. Um, <laughs> there's a guy. He works within IT here in the UK. He's been here for 17 years. He's way overqualified. He's got all qualifications. But he said, Franklin, Ev, I cannot hold a job for more than six months. If they don't mysteriously terminate my contract, there is some crazy, unimaginable office politics. There will be something mysterious that would take the job off me. Sometimes less than six months. He's 41 this year. He's one of the people that watches me. Now, the outcome of his divination came back today amazing if I talks about the energies he needs to venerate as often in fact if I outlined that he needs to be fully initiated into Ifa for fortification spiritual fortification that's one has he ever considered poor performance let me block you straight so, if I talked about that and the heaviest part of the divination, because he did mention that there's something that Izori has been telling him, that there's something off about his mom. She knows everything about him. She's at the forefront of, oh, let's go to this place. Let's go to that place. But when he asks her, okay, you went there to see such and so. What did they tell you? She would tell him, ah, oh, don't worry about it. I've sorted it. She always likes to keep him in the dark, but she wants to control everything about him. Ifa uncovered the fact that his mother... He's in connivance with certain energies and basically is at the forefront of all the losses and the stagnancy and whatever you can call it that he's been dealing with for years. His mom. Do you understand? You know, again, it makes me laugh. When people come here and they try to, you know, you try to blow your grammar. I'm a wordsmith. I regard myself as quite educated. I speak good English. Okay? But if you want to come here, again, I repeat, those of you with your tiny little six senses, you think you can compete with the universe. You are People like you are the ones, whereby... Um, 
when the universe, the, the, the people that know how to circumvent the powers of the universe, when they come at you once, they will absolutely destroy everything you think you own and you've built. Uh, yeah, you can find it hard to believe, but they happen, Paul, okay? Just be civil, okay? Paul, I have my eyes on you. I'm going to time you out for three minutes. Any nonsensical comment, I'll block you permanently. Okay, Paul? The Denike Ali. Hi, Franklin. What a wicked world. A mother. Yeah. So, during my journey through Ifa, um, no, um, enigmatic. Let me tell you something. Please, let's um, consider not blocking people who disagree. No. There is disagreeing and being civil. Do you understand me? I know my people like I know my palms, okay? So when you block them, they start saying, oh, you blocked me because I disagree. No, I would never block you just because you, you ask questions or you are questioning my thought process. You're not a practitioner of Ifa, for example. You can be curious and say, oh, frankly, okay, mm, you're saying this, this, what do you mean by this, this, or I don't believe this, this, this. We can have a nice conversation. But I'm talking about people that they want to be disruptive and just be utterly silly. And they will come with insult or try to say, you know, shut you down because they are religious nut jobs. Do you understand? Those are not people who are being civil. You understand me? I wasn't born yesterday. Okay? Just because somebody doesn't agree. I'm not saying this because I want, oh, 366 people must agree with me. That's narcissistic. That's silly. There are people who are disruptive. They will come at you rudely. So the moment you do that, every form of um, reasonable consideration goes out the window. I'll block you. Some of them, like I say, they can't talk like that to their white employers at work. They can't talk like that. Imagine if you're in a board meeting with your white counterparts at work. You can challenge somebody's thought process. You can disagree, but there's a way you talk, right? There's a way you express yourself. There's a way, you, oh, sorry, Paul, can I stop you there? Uh, I, I disagree. I, I don't think, you know, this and this and then People would listen. You can hold your own, express yourself, and tell them how you feel. Uh, Paul, can I just ask you to be quiet? Can you just shut up? Is that you having a difference in view or just being absolutely stupid? In some organization, that can get you kicked out. Do you understand what I'm saying? So those are two separate things. It's intentional. It's a, it's a very common behavior with our people. You know what I mean? So, my block, yeah, in no time. So, yeah. As I was saying, <laughs> Jesus is to adults as Santa is to kids. I love that, man. So, those are the divination outcomes. Do you know the, the, the favorite part? It's usually, uh, somebody said, what's the meaning of Ogundakete? It's basically one of the Oduifas. There's over 256 combinations, right? So um, for every divination carried out, there will be a corresponding Oduifa, all right? And because they they have verses, it's, it's they are, each one is very deep and extensive. Okay, so it will be a perfect match to that particular divination, that issue that's been, on, you know, dealt with, un unpacked and all that. So yeah, let me say this. When, when, when people say, oh, I can't believe that a mother, oh, a mother would, oh, let's stop it. I've said this before and I'll say it again. Some of you who are adults, who have gone through life, even lived abroad for years, and you realize you lack fulfillment, marriage, everything about you is chaotic. When you retrace your steps, as powerful as those so-called bloodlines and families are, when we retrace ourselves in terms of circumvention of energies. You see, I was talking about Akose Jaye, the predestination things. Now, let me talk quickly about the flip side. African spirituality is so powerful 
that there are people who practice it, follow it in the positive light of it. And then there are also the group of people who enjoy circumventing energies. So, for example, Akosajaya, the predestination checks. Imagine you were born as a baby. You're only a few days old, right? And your parents go and check. But what kind of what kind of child is this? What's this child called to do in this dispensation, right? Ifa will uncover everything about that energy. Do you understand? Imagine that data. That piece of information, all everything about you that's downloaded in the course of that extensive divination, in the hands of good parents, they will be able to guide you, they will be able to carry out all necessary rituals, they will protect the child, they will make sure you go in the right path. But check this, that information in the hand of unscrupulous people. Is absolutely deadly. That's where the problem lies. So, there's in most families in the African community, there's always those people who are inclined to dodgy fraternities, the activation of their third eye, they use it for evil deeds all day, every day. They belong in fraternities, they fly the skies. You know those people? So when a child is born, they can see everything I'm talking about, the predestination checks. To the regular people. Oh my God, what a lovely baby. They can see. So this child is going to grow up to be very wealthy, very powerful, be great. There were, this child is a bright, shining star. They can see. In terms of circumventing the energies, it's multifaceted. The choices before them. Some of them, they will pull a mark on the child. They will do something to make sure. Somebody said, let me answer this. If Ifa is truly potent, how will it allow unscrupulous people to circumvent it? Should it turn against? It? No. Listen. That's a good point, Dio. It's not about Ifa allowing. I need you to understand something. When you carry out divination, right? Ifa helps activate energy provides an insight into oh, this is the child you've received the information about your child about the future of that child this 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 it could be 20 things it could be 15 it could be 10 it could be five right that's a piece of information that should form as a guide in the hands of the guardians or the parents of that child so as a father if i do that sort of divination check for my daughter or my son. I already know that this child was called into the universe to be prosper in the area of agriculture, livestock farming. It's left to me now and the child's mother to amalgamate our forces as genuine caring guardians to ensure that we guide the pathway of that child not to go to engineering school and go and waste away, but to steer the child in the right direction because once they get into the field of agriculture, they will prosper, they will excel. So he goes and study agriculture and university and all that stuff. So to, to respond to what you were saying, if the same piece of information about that child, if I doesn't have control over that, that information then gets, thank you DF for the super chat, gets into my hand, and let's, I'm talking hypothetically, and the mother of the child's hands, if we have dubious intentions, like this child is going to be great, let's say we, at the time of the birth of the child, 
we were just basic people. We ourselves are struggling. And um, now that's where the problem lies. We can then unscrupulously say, let's use that child as a financial springboard for ourselves spiritually. So what we do is we try to take the child's glory, tamper with the child spiritually for all that greatness to pot over, let's say, to my person. Now, some children, some people, not spiritually speaking, are very, very strong. We say in Yoruba, really. when you try them, whatever you're trying gets distorted. You try to touch on that glory, that thing wouldn't work. But because we are negatively inclined, what tends to happen is, what does that mean? They would ensure, if they can't kill that child or take what they want to take, they would ensure that the child just is basically leaving and dead at the same time in terms of fulfillment. They will tamper with your pathway in life in such a way that you will keep breaking chains and struggling, but you wouldn't attain that ultimate height of human fulfillment. And before you know your youth, your best years are gone. Do you understand? Some people take the energy of one child and they give it to another child. Parents do it. It's the people closest to you. Some, it could be your extended family members, aunties, uncles, grandmothers. Grandmothers that fly the skies, right? They can see. They can see. They will tamper with the child or they will put a mark on the child just to distort the pathway of that child. Everywhere that child gets to, every level in life, every phase, they will always face challenges roadblocks, roadblocks, challenges, setback, setback, setback. And then they spend the path, they create lifelong distractions. Make sense? So I'm trying to explain the, the good and bad of life. Now, if, 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 if someone... Now, let's say the universe in eventually directs the steps of that child as they grow into an adult life. Somebody genuine or someone now helps them and they go back, they find their way to like Ifa again, then there will be appeasements, there will be sacrifices, there will be things that can be done that Ifa would help them break that evil cycle. Do you understand? So... The benefits of the Akosa Jaye, the predestination checks, Kadara checks, is to know what this child, this human being, this energy is called to do in this dispensation. This is very heavy, but can this be broken naturally if Ori is strong? It's... <laughs> The moment your energy has been intercepted by evil people, your pathway will be distorted. Some people, how they get you is you, you, you go through life. That's why I've said this before. It could be everything was promising, 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 and then you find love as a woman, for example, with a wrong guy. Do you know there are plenty of women that came to do compatibility checks? And if I came back and said, nope, there's a woman, she's here in the UK, she's already had four children with this guy. But she said, Franklin, it's been problem after problem. This, 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 this relationship has been rocky for more than 12 or 13 years. If I said, that guy is not the energy for you. He's not the person for you. Now, as a regular human being, the instantaneous question is, four children, 
where do I start from? That's why it's always better if we do checks before we leap. Does that make sense? If I would tell you a true account of things, it's up to you. The woman has four children with the wrong man. There's also another one, a gentleman who is Ghanaian. He moved from the US to Ghana, took a lot of money to start real estate. Everything ran down and it's been terrible for him. He went back to the States to rebuild. He lost even more money. Now, it turns out that the energy came, the, the setback came from his wife's bloodline. The wife has been marked from when she was a child. The wife's parents are trying to unscrupulously use her uri, like I explained earlier. So for years, they've been after their own daughter. The uri is very strong. So as a means of retaliatory action from within the wife's mother's mother side, they then attacked the husband so that the wife doesn't enjoy a good marriage. They tore everything down about this man's life. No, I can't talk about astrology. Astrology has nothing to do with me. Totally irrelevant. Sorry. Do you understand what I'm saying? So now, Ifa says she needs to remove herself from that situation. Yeah, you don't have to be Nigerian to do Ifa divination. If I have concerning checks, back in check. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? It's powerful. So, on a closing note, when I, can I do if I, yes you can teacher. Is it possible if I to be directed to the right wife? Yeah, yeah. You check, you do compatibility checks. So there was a guy he gave four names of four different ladies. And if I said a particular lady is your match, and it turned out that's the one that he really, really loves. The other ones that live here in the West, that one, that one lives in Nigeria. The point I'm trying to make is these things ensure that we have a smooth sailing. I've been through highs and lows in my personal life. Oh man, you look back and you wish, boy, if I had known. There are things that today, how do we do if our consultations if we are in the West? That's why you send me an email. I'll take you to the priest. Have you not been listening? There are plenty, plenty, plenty of divinations in my inbox. <sighs> Every day. Pardon typos, Franklin. What information is needed to do compatibility check and other if our divinations? What info do we need to email to you? Um, your name? Your mother's first name? The name of the person? The dude that you're trying to do divination checks with? On. Just contact me via email. My email address is in the description below. I have no vested interest. I'll bring it back to you. So there's this woman. Ifa said she's trying to separate from this man because of irreconcilable differences. And there's another man that she's eyeballing. And Ifa, because it's spirituality checks. So if I said this man that you are trying to separate from, go and fix your differences, that's your husband. That other guy, it will be okay for a short while and things 
will get absolutely destroyed. But as humans, because when we are fixated on things, we like things the way we want them to be. So she was trying to gain an argument with me as if I was the one deciding for her. And I said, no. I've given you the genuine outcome of the divination. Whatever you want to do with your life, it's up to you. There are some people, they need to carry out appeasement, sacrifices. There are plenty of people, negative energies affecting. Some people need to venerate. Some people need to get initiated to, if I, some women, they need to be initiated to the order of Oshun. They need to venerate the energy of Ajay. I think a lot of people look at Ifa through the lens of religion. Of course, Ifa is way deeper than you can ever think. So complex and that there is no end to the knowledge of it. Believe me. Over the years, Ifa divinity has been distorted by the one-sided developed intellect of human beings. Unfortunately, the original activities of Ifa has not been purely preserved. I can't go against that, Lady B. My partner has his name changed due to adoption. Which name if I need for a reading? His name? Your name, your mother's first name, your partner's name, if you're, if you're looking into compatibility checks. You understand? If it's your partner, their name, their mother's first name, and... Whatever it is they need to find out from Ifa, anything, absolutely. It's, it's potent. It's here and now. Wouldn't you want to have, that's what I was saying. I gave an example the other day. doesn't matter if you're my friend. Oh, Franklin, I have this brilliant idea. Um, let's start shipping African food from Nigeria and selling the UK. On paper, that sounds like a brilliant idea. Back in the days, as a regular human being, if you're somebody that I like, I have a bit of money, I'll say, yeah, 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 let's do it, man. Why are we bringing Gary, beans? Let's start doing the business. Oh, we're going to make money. Oh, yeah, African food. But the Franklin of today, if you were my friend and you came up with this idea, as I explained, I'm going to carry out divination. And I take guidance from Ifa. No, no, no. Lady B, I explained earlier. When you get into the study of Ifa yourself, and as you grow in any like in any other field in life, you understand things. Um, a lot of the things that people pick up, a lot of the lies that may have been sold to people are from unscrupulous people not necessarily the true practice of ifa do you understand so when you meet genuine ifa practitioners they will let you know that nope nope that's not ifa okay i'll give you an example there's an african-american brother that emailed me some three four days ago and he said franklin can i ask you a question somebody in nigeria Check this, for full Ifa initiation, this brother sent somebody 2,000 US dollars and he did not step a foot in Nigeria. Did you hear what I said? And then on a video call, they showed him that they did some bish bash bosh and he thinks he has been fully initiated into the order of Ifa. It's a scam. Never. You have to be on ground. It's very detailed. It can be tiring, the process. It took me nearly two weeks. There are processes. You will be drenched. There's energies involved. It's not a joke. This is your life. That guy paid $2,000 to some bogus Ifa priest. Who lied? That, yeah, 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 yeah. He lives in New Jersey. And he thinks, oh, yeah, yeah, I've been... He sent me some images and I was like, oh. 
Bro, they've scammed you. Do you understand? Those are not genuine IFA practitioners. Sadly, plenty of people fall victim. Ha! Huh. Lastly, there is one that I have said before. I'll answer that now, Kazim, one second. There is one that I've said before, and I'll say it again. This is the prime problem when it comes to African spirituality. When people go for divination, especially if you are having spiritual attacks, blockage with your life, your destiny. Any well-trained Babalao and um, pre um, custodians of the secrets of the universe, they can see if it's the elders of the night involved in your story, your matters, maybe from your mother's side or your father's side, they pull a mark on you from when you're a baby. Maybe your mother is actually the one at the center point because she belongs in that fraternity. Those priests, because a lot of them belong in a well-known fraternity that I'm not going to name, what they do is they can see what the problem, oh, this person is marked. But well, they wouldn't tell you. They would tell you, ah, oh, it's from your mother's side, such and such and such. Now, okay, you then think, okay, what's the remedy? They're going to tell you, oh, we're going to do this sacrifice. We're going to do this, 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 this. They'll take your money and they wouldn't touch it. Do you, did you hear what I said? They would take your money, but they wouldn't touch it. Why? Because most of the time, those people, Babalaos in those fraternities and those elders of the night, they work in cahoots. If you meet an Ifa priest that does not belong in those fraternity, they are purely Ifa priest. They're very hard to find. Those are the ones I work with. When you meet a genuine Ifa priest, they will take your matter in front of Eshula Luogiriyoku. It's the finest for those type of matters. And they would say, issue, this is your son, son of such and such, lagbaja, malagbaja, this, 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 this. They will put the sacrifice forward. They know what to do. They will be able to work with you, to break the chains, the hold on your life, and set you free. It's not an easy task. But the point I'm making is they will genuinely, regardless of how much money you've paid, they will genuinely do the work. So, but unfortunately, the trustworthy ones are outnumbered by the charlatans. So if you fall into the hands of those charlatans, they bill you, they take your money, and you remain the same. This is the experience of quite a lot of people. Does that mean... That's exactly how Ifa works? No. I hope that makes sense. So, I found Ifa and it's become a way of life for me. I'm enjoying every step of the way. It's the truth. It's the light. It's who we are. I'm a Yoruba man, first of all, and it's enabled me to see a clear insight. There are certain things at the, at the point in my life when I uncovered certain things, you would think, Whew, I wish I had known this when I was a lot younger. That's what happens. Do you understand? Well, you take it from where you've started your journey and hopefully one step after the other, you can make amends. Do you understand? Let me read that. Itefa done for baby, Ishefa for adult, who has never done Itefa. No, uh, let me explain Ishefa and Itefa. Ishefa is basically like, it's the first part of a crucial, inevitable first part of Ifa initiation. So Ishefa is when your hand is being held and it's an induction, your canals, your palm canals, they would sit in a clay pot brown clay pots, right? It's it's a ritual process. They would do that, but that's kept aside. 
it'll have your name on it, okay? It's like the first level that you must do. So once you've done that, then that prepares you now for itefa, and that's your full initiation. You understand me? So once you've done the full initiation, during the final day of the full initiation, that's when they download everything about your your life on this planet about your universal data set your uri who you are who is franklin what's the oduifa that brought franklin to this dispensation what was franklin called to do what was i really called to do Do you understand? In fact, I would tell people, me, if I picked me, that me, I like, I have to get fully initiated. It's because of the kind of Ori. So uh, we, we like, we're born warriors, man. I am different from the next guy. I was picked by Ifa. The Ifa divination basically said, dude, okay, to put things in perspective, if they had done um, a predestination check for me as a, as a baby, it would have been exactly the same. So you see, the beautiful thing about it is, imagine me as a baby, right? If I would have told my parents that get this baby fully initiated, and that would have defined my pathway right at the start of life. How were you picked by Ifa? during the course of divination, it gets uncovered. It's spiritual. That's how you get picked. Is it not frightening? No. Our con enemy, our kogun, there's nothing to be frightened about. <laughs> spiritual fortification is not, it's nothing frightening. If I, as majorly practice today, is occultism and occultism mysticism, this, no, it's not. Keep quiet, Lady B. Keep quiet. Keep quiet, Jare. Keep your mouth shut. Go and sleep. I told you it's occultism. What do you know about it? Keep quiet. Make we hear what. Let me tell you, Lady B, yeah? Don't forget Franklin. Don't forget me. Whenever you have issues, Come to me, I will always be your brother, okay? I'll take your matters before Ifa. You understand? When Ifa helps you break spiritual chains, your eye go open. Oh yeah, the way Ifa is practiced occultism. Which occultism? Which occultism? <laughs> you don't understand, man. Ludo, occultism. Ah! Let me also tell you something. Under the guise of African spirituality, which is the big umbrella, people would always join fraternities. Let me say this, it's very, very important. Joining fraternities, I don't, I deliberately don't want to name any fraternity, no disrespect to anyone. But let me be clear, if you decide to go and sign up to a fraternity, fraternity is not practice of Ifa. Do you understand? Let's be clear. Because the reason I'm saying this is a lot of people have been dubiously sucked into the workings of fraternity because of lack of knowledge, because of naivety. You understand? If you choose, if you're looking for, for some fame, you're look, desperately looking for political climb or whatever you're looking for, and you want to go join a fraternity, now, that's unique to you. Just let's be clear. That has nothing to do with Ifa. Did you hear what I said? Because some people, I've met people, you know, in the course of having conversations, oh, yeah, if you belong in this, you know, you can, you, you, you can also do this. Fraternity is totally different. It has nothing to do. 
I want to inquire about a lot of things. Aliyah, send me an email, foodchannel1960 at gmail.com. My email is in the description area of this video. All right? Now, lastly, some people, I get these emails all the time. Oh, Franklin, I want to get initiated into IFA and all that. Yes, you can get initiated, but for me, my personal experience, IFA divination picked me that dude dude you need to be initiated fully initiated how did you find the true ifa priest the universe pointed me in the person's direction send me bummy I feel a lot of black people are just scared of the unknown about. Omoba, I like that. You know why? I like that statement. I feel a lot of black people are just scared of the unknown about African spirituality. I like that. Let me address that quickly. It's true. Because when you've lived your life, you've gone through your formative years, you're an adult now, you've lived your life, and all you've known is religion. So, so some dude or somehow you're hearing about these African spirituality. And to make it even worse, your knowledge is actually formed based on some dodgy Nollywood script that's not a true and honest representation of what we're talking about. Nollywood is just crap when it comes to um, spirituality. All, all they depict is utter nonsense. So I can understand where people are apprehensive and are like, oh, Mm. Mm. there's a part of me that wants to talk about mm. I don't know somebody said this, this no man you understand so it's, 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 it's just basically you get into it get knowledge and if like I say if it's not for you go ahead and live your best life you understand There are plenty. I'm telling you, my brothers and sisters, most of you, are, some of you are probably here. A lot of people that have emailed me for divinations and, 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 and all that. Bro, people are dealing with crazy stuff. So the knowledge of spirituality, evil people, they distort it and they use it unscrupulously. That's life. A good police officer equally has power as a bad police officer. A good police officer stops you in traffic. So, oh, hi, let me see your driver's license. He checks, everything checks fine. See you later, bye-bye. A bad police officer who has a daily target will do what? Equally has power, like a good police officer, right? But what do they do? They then indulge in what? Abuse of power. They carry out misrepresentation frauds. They racially profile you. Or they provoke you to behave in a certain way so that they can use fraudulent misrepresentation against you, um, bogus arrest, and unfairly label you with criminal record in the end and jail you so that so that they can achieve their selfish goals do you see how that works a judge that sits in the court is absolutely powerful if the judge is um being honest in terms of how they do their job and they hear the cases and they are fair. They don't infringe on your fundamental human right. They judge accordingly. They use their powers as they should. Yes, somebody would win, somebody would lose, but at least both parties will be like, it was a fair process. But if a dodgy and corrupt judge gets hold of a case, who is equally powerful, abuse of power, would make them absolutely destroy the life of an innocent man. 
That happens all the time within judiciary systems across the world. So I'm just giving these examples. The world is about good and bad. Do you understand? But in African spirituality, when people look into the brightness of a child's glory, they can get away with circumventing the glories. They can get away with doing something unscrupulous. Um, unscrupulous to them. But there is something called karma. Atubotoya ulida. You can't get away with it. Does that make sense? So when you circumvent energy, you can get away with it for years and use it, but there will always be a payback by the energies of the universe. Some of those people that do um, illegality spiritually, they end up in Tartars. Their children end up paying for it. They will pay for it. But the, the sad truth is, the lives that they've affected negatively will lose a chunk of their lives or sometimes their human existence. Do you see? So the choice is yours. If you get into African spirituality, the direction you go with your knowledge or how you want to practice African spirituality is actually up to you. There are some of you, you're very temperamental, you're very wicked by default setting. Just because somebody disagrees with you, you take their name, you take their mother's name, you take their pictures, you're going somewhere, you want them to kill the person off. All because you are the misunderstanding of a plate of jollof rice. People do that. Can you help me kill him? Can you do something to the glory of his children? You'll get a payback. You can get away with it now, but you get a payback. Um, karma is a fallacy. Yeah, it's a fallacy to you, of course. People do all sorts of bad things with no consequences back. Are you present in every human being's life in real time? Have you, have you spent your human existence in the life of every other person around you? through the entirety of, your, of their lives, from A to Z, for you to come to the conclusion that karma has never dealt with them during the journey of their lives. So how can you say that? That's not an informed statement. You, 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 somebody might do something 10 years ago. 10 years after, you're not, you're not there with them when the payback comes. They may die abruptly. You understand? Mm-hmm. <laughs>